information all together. And I, and I even gave you an assignment to go into it. And then all of you decided to follow one person and you figured out other wrong. I, I even saw the assignments in class before. I solved it. I, I, I solved it. And then I. Uh, so, and, but there's a video to show that I, I saw it. So, and so I, saw, I saw it in class, and you guys decided to go and copy the best person to put it. <laughs> Everybody copied the, the exact same thing. Oh. <laughs> so, but. That is one of the questions in the answer, so you can also solve it, and then it's about 10 marks, so. Right. Huh? What? But everybody had it wrong, so maybe including you, so what is the point? Right, so now we looked at uh, how to use logic gates to design computational logic, like decoders, multiplexes, right? We are going to look at memory right now. Right, and then we're going to look at memory and so then this is, as I said the last time, this is the internal architecture of the CPU. And then this is a single cycle CPU. Right, so we have looked at the ALU already. I've shown you how to draw the ALU even though you guys all had it wrong. Right, so go and learn how to do that. So now we're going to look at the internal architecture of Memory, how memory is designed. So, the area. I already gave you an assignment of it on that. And I showed you how to draw it in class. I even drew it, I drew everything with the gaze and everything. But you guys all decided to go and copy one person. Alright, so now you're going to see how memories are. I mean, and then here, a very important thing that we have. Register files, so you have memory and you have register files. Register files is just like memory, but smaller, right? Memories are bigger, they, they can store a lot of data. Register files are limited. Same as memory, same design, but they store very few data, right? So let's start with the register file. Now, probably since. So this is how. So everything I'll be talking about is based on the exam, so pay attention, right? We don't have time. So you'll be given a design like this, and then I'll be asking you to actually do some little calculations and then draw the internal architectures of stuff like this, right? So this is how the input and output of a register file looks like. Have you seen it? So this is called a dual read point, single write point. 32 by 32 register file. Very, very careful. The wedding is very careful. So two are read points. So what, what can you see there? So you, it means that you can read two registers at, at a time. Have you seen the outputs? Two of them, QA and QB are the outputs. So it's two are read points, right? And then a single write point, why? From the diagram, a single write point. Why a single write point? Yeah, so it means that you can give it data through only one port, but you can read data from two ports. And then it's a 32 by 32 register file. So what does the 32 by 32 mean? So we have 32 by 32 register file. What does it mean? I have, I have, I have no time. So it is how the exam is going to be like this. So pay attention then, answer the questions, then you'll be fine. What does take two by two? Okay, so now from 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 the name, register file. So what does it mean? Register file, right? Register file. It's just like a file that you have, and then we have registers inside. Understood? It's as simple as that. Registers are within a file, like within a file. That's what we call a register file. Right? So now it means that how many registers are within that file? 
That's very important, right? And then what is the data weight of each register? So it's something like this. You have this is your register for there are this is your, some kind of memory, right? There are some re 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 registers. You need to know the number of registers there are, and then you also need to know these are locations, right? You need to know how much data each location stores. Very important. So if I give you the 32 by 32 register file, it just means that this one here it means that we have 32 of them. So we have 0 up to 31 registers. 0, 1, 2, 3, up to 31 registers, right? And then this other 32 means that we have the, they call it data weights of each register, but each register is 32 bits. You understand that? Is that clear? So if I give you something like 32 by 4 register power, what does it mean? What does it mean? The number of registers. The number of registers. What does 32 mean? The data weight. Simple, right? So now if you look at this diagram here, right? So if I give you a 32 by 32 bits, it means that the data weight is 32. So the input to the register file is 32 bits. As, as you can see here. Have you seen it? Have you seen it? It's yes. very important. So the input to the this register file, the 32 by 32 register file, is 32 bits. Now, if you have the input to 32 bits, it means that the input is equal to the output. Right? So the outputs are also 32 by 32. But it means that there are two of them. Right? Now, once we have this, we know that there are how many registers inside there? 32 of them. Now, I want to read this memory or to write to this memory. I have to give it an address. Very important because we don't know where we are reading or, or how to, we don't know where to read or write. So we, we need to give it an address and give it data. So let's say I'm about to write. So this, so this register file, what do I do? I have to give it an, an address. Which register am I reading to? Or am I writing to? Then I give it data. Right? So if you see the WR over right there, WR just right means the right address. Very important, right address. So the right address is 5 bits. So I can give it a 5 bit number. And then that 5 bit number will indicate which register within the register file is being written to, right? Why is it 5 bit? Anybody? If everybody can answer this question, yes, 5 marks for you. Yes, 5 marks. The algorithm is the right address. As I said, to, to write to this to write to 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 file, right? I need the right address and then the data itself. Give it the address. The address will now pick out which one to write to, which register to write to, and then give the data and then to be written to that particular register. And then the register, the right address is 5 bits. I'm just asking why is it 5 bits? Anybody? Yes, 5 marks free. Right? Say What? Say it, say it, say it. Anybody else? Yes, 5 marks. You guys know 5 marks. If anybody is able to answer, it means that I'll be marking over 95. That, that person gets there, get the 5 marks, and then the rest of you will be fighting for 95. Sending five bits to each register. That's just an address. It is an address, right? Uh, <laughs> anybody else? People are watching. Anybody else? So nobody. So again, always be attention. How many registers are there inside? 
inside the register file for this system to make I mean, I mean, get it to be right. So if I want to address each location, update each of them, how many places do I need to address it? This hardware here is the address, right? I want to address each location of the entity, right? So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, up to the I need some kind of data width for my address. So the address can start from 0 up to what? 31. How many bits can I, how many bits can 31 go like? So it means that the highest, the highest is what? 0, 0, 0, 0. The lowest is 0, 0, 0, 0 5 bits, right? The highest is 1, 1, 1, 1. Right? So if I have take two locations, right? What I can do is that to the power n is equal to fit. This n will be the number, the number of bits of the address. Very, very easy. Right? So it is 2 to the power fit. 2 to the power n is equal to 2 to the power like this. Take it to each one. 5. Do you understand? So you need five bits to be able to address all zero of thirty one locations. That's why it's five bits. Understood? Do you understand? <laughs> so now I have a very important I have a right address. Right? Now, I think we have uh, uh, two read ports, right? So I should be able to select each read port. So it means that I need two read addresses. So RA and RB are the read addresses. So if I want to read something from the register file, I give it an address A, give it address B, and then it will read two registers for me at the same time. Understood? So I need the RA and RB2 are also 5 bits. Why? Because they are taking two registers inside there. They need 5 bits to address that. You understand? So the example is simple. Give you an 32 by 4 file. Right there. And I also find the data weights. What is the right address? What is the read address? What is the output? Output data weight. Right? There's another signal on the right here. Right? So we the database is called the, the right enable. So before I write to the register file, I need to enable that location. So that signal is just a right enable. So if the right enable is one, that is when I can write to that register file. If the right enable is zero, I can never write to, to that register file. Understood? So the right enable, because the right enable is just one bit. It can take a value of zero or one, based on when I'm, if I'm writing to the register file or not. Do you understand? So I'll continue. If you understand, ask because I can guarantee you the one is coming. I've, I've already said the question. Something like this is coming. Not, not the exact same thing, but something in that. <laughs> In their life. Pardon? Shall I continue? Then, what? What? Right again. Yeah, so I said, if you want to write, if you want to write to a particular location, the right enable, the right enable must be one. Once you enable it, like you want to enable it, it means that one, right? So before I, I can write to any location, I must make sure that the right enable is one. Then I can now give it data and it. If the right enable is zero, whether I give it data or not, it won't write anything. Okay.
So this is just the moving step up. So now we have seen what we have just seen right now is the input output of the register file. Right? But we have not looked into the register file, right? So let's see what is inside the register file. So first of all, the D is the data weight, right? Is the, is the data weight. And then that, that is where I can put my data. If I have it, any data, but the data must be the data must be 32 bits. It can be more than that. Right? So that's the line I put it, right? So now we have register zero. So this data weight is connected to all the registers. We start with register zero and then depending on uh, the depending on the architecture, they could be 32, 64, it depends on what they give. So I can say design uh, an 8 by 48 register file and stuff like that. So it means that we have 48 of them and then the data which is 8, right? But here we are designing 32 by 32 register file. So it means that we have registers from zero, register zero up to what? Register 31. That addresses 32 bits, right? The data width, the data is connected to all of them, as you can see on top. You see that it's connected to all of them, right? So now, so now, if I want to write to one register, how would I do that? If the D is connected to all of them, it means that if I put any data on it and, and enable it, it means that it will write to all the register, all of them, but I don't want that, right? I want to be able to write to a particular register. So what, how can I achieve this? Wait, we looked at some logic, combination logic the last time, right? We looked at an encoder, okay, probably, right? An encoder, a decoder, multiplexes, and stuff like that. So I need to be able to use one of these components, right, to put or to fix it within this circuit to make sure that only one register location is selected at a time. Which component can I use? A decoder. As easy as that, right? So you need it. So if I want to write to one particular location at the time, right, I need a decoder. And then I said the decoder is just a, a it enables, so here, you see that uh, because we have 32 registers, the output of the decoder will be 32, right? Now the input of the decoder will be the right address, RW, very important, right address. So this is a 5 by 32 decoder. Understood? Because there are 32 registers inside there, and then we need 5 bits to address those, those 32. So what the decoder does is that once you give it an input, it activates only one output, as we saw the last time. Right? So you just need the decoder to be connected to it. So probably if I give it address 0001, you know that address 001 is 1. So it will activate only one of the lines, only the one. So if you have 01, so it activates the register line that goes to 1. And then you can easily write to that location. Understood? Right. So now, as I said, before you can write to the register, you need an enable. The enable is a W, only one bit. So what you can do is that uh, the output of the decoders and then the enable are connected to AND gates. So it means that, and then you know that at AND gates, both, both inputs must be one before the output is, is, is one, right? So we know that already. So if I want to write to location 001, what I have to do is that I have to make the new one. As I said, you can only write to a location when the W is one, the writing level is one. So you make the new one and then you give it the address 001 and then this one will be only one of these two packets. So it will be one, one, and then the rest are So only that line will be activated. The line to register one will be activated and then you can see right so that will be value between that particular register. Do we understand? Very easy. This, 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 this. Shall we continue? On? So this is how... Hmm? So I said that uh, for the register file, in order for us to write to the register file, we need what is called the right name. If the right name is one, that's when I can write it. If the right name is zero, I can never write it. So what we do is that we can connect the output of the decoder to 
you can connect them to hand gates. So each hand gate, so we have 32 outputs, right? So you take one output, connect it to a hand gate, you connect the right enable, it will be able to the hand gate also. So that if the right enable is one, the output will depend on uh, on the output of the decoder. You, you, you understand? Because one one hand gate, the output is one when both inputs are one. So if once you make the interview one, now I mean that the output will actually depend directly on the output of the of the decoder. Shall I continue? Yes. So this is how to write to the register file. Okay. We, we, we already know that this decoder is we are not going to so now, how do I read from the register file? We have seen how to write to it, right? Very easy, how to write it. So how do I read from it? Now, to read from, so I want to read one location at a time, right? And then there are 32 of them. So, and I want to read from one location, only one location at a time. What, what will I use? What component will I use? Hmm? I just guess it right. So the first one was the decoder because uh, the decoder has many outputs and some some kind of uh, input based on the output. Now, if you want to uh, you want to kind of route only one signal to the output, what do I use? A decoder again. A multiplexer. <laughs> so we looked at the design of the we looked at the design of the multiplexer with something like this, right? With many many inputs and only one output. So all they do is that you connect this state to register outputs to a multiplexer a box, and then it will route one of the outputs. But in the multiplexer, there's a very important signal. The select signal, right? How many bits will, will be the select signal? Yeah? This is the select signal. We have 32 of this one, so 0 to 31. So if I want to address 0 to 31, how many select signals do I need? Yeah? 31. 31 again. Right? Right? So once you know this, then the exam is just going to be easy for you. So you need five bits to address this data to, and then one of them, based on this select signal, only one of them will be the output. So if I want to read from one location at a time with this, with take two registers, I need a multiplexer. Understood? So I just connect the multiplexer to it, and then the five bits to it. So the five bits is the read address, right? But here's the case we are we said that uh, the one we are designing right is a dual port. So it means that how do I design it or what components should I add again to make sure that uh, I can read from two registers at a time? So how can I read from two registers? This one, once I do something like this, I can read from only one register at a time, right? So if I want to read from two registers, what do I do? Two registers. Anybody? So all you have to do is tap from each line, connect another multiplexer, <laughs> and you are done. Another multiplexer, and then another uh, right. Uh, Read address, then you can address two of them at the, at the same time. So here, if I want to read from the two locations, I give it address R A, give it address R B. It will read the address from R A through Q A. Have you seen it? And then it will read uh, the address of uh, uh, Q B through the other multiplexer. 
So this is how to read from two locations. Say if I want to read from four locations, what do I do? Eh? So about four, if I want to read from four locations, I need four multiple things. Understood? So this is the entire architecture of the register file. So I've added the how I've added the reading, the reading part, the writing part. This, this is question section B, question number one. That one there, yeah, online TV. It's something like this. Probably. It's something like this. Just draw the general architecture of a 32 or by something. Just something like this. Shall I continue on? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yes. It's in the slide, so what's the point? You have the slides already, so what's the point? Sir? You have the slides, I've made videos for you, so there's no point for you to feel this. There's no point for you to feel. Alright, so shall I continue on? Alright, so the the most important thing is that this register file, so uh, as I said, this register file is just memory, but it's storing very limited data, only 32 of them. So once it's storing very limited data, it's very, very fast to read to a location and then to write to a location is quite fast because there are just few registers inside there. Right? Now, if you if want to add extra ports, like an, an extra uh, read port, you just need another multiplexer. It's very easy to add it, right? But now there's an issue about the scaling. You can always store a lot of data within this register file because now, if I want to store, uh, perhaps I want to store 32 megabytes, 32 megabits, right? 32 megabits uh, with a 32 bit register. So each the data width is 32. I want to store a number of them, 32 megabits of them, right? So you can guess the number of, uh, or the type of register, or the type of multiplexer to use, right? And then the type of decoder to also use, right? So if I say that I want to store, I want to have 32 megabits, so something like this. Megabits, right? By 32 register file, right? Again, the exact same way. Each location is what? It's something like this. Each location is what? 32. And then we have 32 mega is what? Mega, mega, mega. So, what you must know that there is in memory, we have kilo, right? We have mega, right? We have giga, right? So, let's do it. So, kilo is what? Okay? Thousand. In memory, we use 2 to the power 10. Right? So, what is what is what is to the power 10? Right, so instead of 1000, they use 1024. So a kilo in memory is to the power 10, which is 1024. Understood? Mega is what? Yeah? yeah. Million or thousand. So here is 2 to the power 20. So anytime you see megabytes, Megabyte, so it's 2 to the power 20, not this uh, 2 to the power 6. Uh, no, not, 10, not 10 to the power 6. It's 2 to the power 20. You understand? Giga is what? 2 to the power 30. You understand? So pay attention to this one. Like, 
very important when you are when you are dealing with memory. Right? So now if I have 32 megabits, it means that this out 32 times 2 to the power 20. 32 times 2 to the power 20 number of registers here. Right? So if I'm using a decoder, I will, I will need a very huge decoder, right? If I'm using a multiplexer, I will need a very huge multiplexer. And then this can pose issues when we are storing a lot of data in the register file. So the register file, we don't really use it to store a lot of data, just small amount of data. Understood? Do you understand? So now I can I can also say, so this is the multiplexer to store only an 8, uh, which is an 8 by 4 multiplexer, right? I can say, oh, uh, I'm, I'm giving you an 8 by an 8 to 1 multiplexer, right? How many logic gates are within an 8 to 1 multiplexer? Right? How many, how many, how many of them are there? Right, so now I can also go further by saying that how many transistors are there? These are all easy, easy questions that can yes. You know what transistors are, right? You know what logic gates are, so you know the difference between a transistor and a logic gate. So transistors are used to make logic gates as to the last time. So for the last time, when we designed, we saw the the uh, CMOS NAND gate, right? We saw the three CMOS NAND gate, right? And then the three NAND gate had an architecture like this. We have the CMOS on top, and then we have and we have the M1 down here. So this means that the M the NAND gate has one, two, three, four, four transistors. Just one NAND gate has four transistors. And then I said that to design uh, uh, an AND gate, you just connect and you that to the output here. Right? Yes. And you better as uh, So you that the CMOS and gates has one, two, three, four, five, six transistors. Right? So an AND gate normally has six transistors. A NAND gate has four transistors. So if I tell you to calculate the number of transistors in this eight to one multiplexer, can you do it? The NAND, 4. Then an AND gate has 6. Alright, you know, go and study how to, how to calculate it. Alright, so now we have seen how to, the internal architecture of the register file. Then we have seen that you cannot really use it to store a lot of data, just 32 bit kind of data. Right? And then we have only 32 of them. So how do we store, when we have so much data, where do we store it? Right? So now we have to store it in an actual memory. So the memory design basically just like the register file, but a little bit different. Right? So let's see. So again, this is the architecture of the CPU. The CPU has a register file, which stores registers, only 32 of them. Then, if you want to store a lot of data, or if, once you write your code and then your code gets translated to machine code, right? Where does it store? Because at, at times, at times you write a very large number of like your code has so many lines, right? So it means that it needs a lot of memory to store it. So we store it in the memory of the CPU. So let's see the architecture of the memory, right? So this, this is again the input output of memory. Right, so all you need in memory is an address and all you need is data. 
As you can see, the address is N. The address has a data rate of N, right? The address is single port, it means like it's only an input. It's, a, it's only an input. But the data is a dual port or a bidirectional kind of port, right? So it means that you can pass data through there and you can read data. You can pass data through there to be stored in the memory. And then if you can read data from that same line. Do you understand? Right. So now another important thing is how do I calculate the address lines and then the address and then the data? Right. So you might be giving something like this. How many addresses are necessary for the 4 m the 4 mega by 8 So this kind of architecture or this kind of memory is known as S ground. Right? So if I give something like a 4 m by 8 S ground. Right? So I can ask you what is the data width of a 4 by 8 S ground? What's the data with anybody? Hmm? Four. It's four m by eight. So use use the way I explained the state two by state two equal memory power, right? Just use the same analogy. So if I'm if you are giving a memory of four by eight, four m by eight, right? So calculation here. So again, this. Is the data width right? So we view that you have memory and it's a data width. Each location within the memory stores eight bits, right? Then the four M is the number of locations. You have four M locations, four mega locations, right? Now I need to be able to calculate it. So I said mega is what. To the power right. So if I have 4m, it means that I have 4. Once I have 4m, it means that I have 4 by 2 to the power 20. You understand? Right? That's 4m. Right? So now it means I have 4 times. So all 20 number of locations, right? So how many bits do I need to address this number of locations? Anybody? So what we are doing right now, we are, we are able to calculate the number of locations. If I give you 4m by 8, we know the data width is 8. Yeah, already. We know the, my number of locations is 4 times 2 to the power 20, right? Number of locations. Now, the most important thing now here is the address. What is the question for the address? How many, how many bits do I need to be able to address all these locations? How many? 22. Right? So it's this 4 by uh, 2 to the power 20 means that it's 2 to the power 2 by 2 to the power 20. So 2 to the power 22. Easy. Right? <laughs> Understood? So you need the address to this thing must have 22 bits. The width of the address must be 22. Understood? So again, you will be giving something like this. 4 uh, m by 8 or, or, or whatever it is. And I ask you what is the data width of a 4 m by 8? What is how many locations are in a 4M by 8? What is the address width of a 4M by 8? Simple stuff like this. <laughs> Understood? Right. Now, uh, we have other signals to the memory. We have what is known as the chip selects. So if I want to write, or if I want to read from the memory, the chip select must be 1. Right. You see that all those signals, chip select, right in the front page, are 11 bits, right? So if I want to write to the memory or read to the, or read to the memory, the chip select might be 1. If I want to write to the memory, the chip select might be 1. Write to the memory might be 1. If I want to read from the memory, chip select might be 1. 
what food in the room must be one. Simple stuff like this. You do understand? So this is it. This is the take uh, the four M by eight. So the four M the input again, as I said, the data input is eight bits, the output is again eight bits. The address, as we saw in the calculations, is between the two bits. Right? So now if I say uh, design the internal or uh, design a four by two S round, what is the data weight? Within a four by two S round two, what is the address width? Huh? Two. But we have four locations inside there, so we need only two bits to address those four locations. Easy stuff, right? So this is how the architecture looks like again. So because we have uh, two data units. So so is it that we have D in one and D in two, only two, only two bits, right? So the output two is only two bits. D out one, D out two. The address is, is two bits. We have right in the go, we have output in the go. So this is those kind of signals are known as the input output to the S round. So how does the internal architecture look like? So this is how the internal architecture of an S round looks like, right? So if I want to read from so <laughs> have you seen how it looks like? We have a decoder in there, and then we have our 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 inputs, the D connected to uh, the actual story. So I hope you guys know what a flip flop is. A flip flop. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So flip flops store, store data. So that's what we use in the S flop. So you guys already know what flip flop is, right? That's say like, huh? okay. So they use a flip flop. The flip flop has an input D, and then it has an enable to write to the flip flop. You need to enable it. And then you have an enable line over there. So now here, if I want to write to Location, probably location one, right? Wow. So if I want to write to location one, I want to write this data line. So these are the data line, right? You want to use all of them are connected to the different blocks, to the same blocks, right? So if I want to write to any of them, now I want to write to this location one. This is the one. Connected to the right? First of all, I need to be able to enable, I need to be able to enable the, the flip flop. Right? So you can see that the, the inputs to the flip flop is an output of an AND gate, right? Have you seen it? Continue. So now those we are often known as the white lines, those in yellow are the white lines, and then what we are often known as the bit lines, right? In the S rock. Right. Okay. So now another another very another question that will be asked is uh, you have so what happens is that in S rounds you can build bigger S rounds using smaller S rounds, right? So you can combine a number of S rounds to build bigger S rounds. So a person can propose like this: you have a one S round. I want to construct a four M. By eight S round, right? So 
the address bit here as well. This is my data, this is my address. Right, so I want to construct 4M by 8 is from, but I want to use uh, 4K by 1024 S from. So this a 4K by 1024 S from is, is a smaller S from than the 4M by 8. But the question is, I want to construct this 4M by 8 S from missing a number of this 4K by 1024 S roms, right? So the simple question is, how many 4K by 1024 S roms do I need to construct a 4M by 8 S from? Very, a very, very important question. So, now you need to first of all, a 4K by 1024 is from what is the data width of the 4K by 1024 is from? Data width is what? 1024. How many locations are there? 4K, right? So, what is the address width? Hmm? You see how easy that is? I hope you guys understand how all those calculations are done. Yeah. I just explain what K is, what M is, and what G is. Kilo, mega, and giga. To the power. To the power. To the power. Very important. Right. So now, how many 4K by 1024 do I need to construct 4M by 8? Yes, sir. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. There's no time. This, this, this is another typical example. It's, it's coming, so. <laughs> it's coming, so you not exactly the same, but you must be able to do some kind of calculations to get. The number. If I have a bigger S from, I need some number of smaller S from to be able to construct it. So how do I calculate it? You guys should do some, some kind of calculation. Let me see something. Let me just give you two minutes. How would I calculate something like this? Simple mass. All I do is division. Take the bigger S from divided by the smaller S from. 4M by 8 divided by 4 what? K by 1024. Quite the answer. K is what? 10 by 1024. Are you understanding it? Now, this is 2 is 2 to the power 2 times 2 to the power 20 times 2 to the power 8 is what? Divided by 4 is 2 to the power 1 times 2 to the power 10 times 1024 is what? Hmm? 10. So this is equal to what? 2 to the power. If, if, if I add all of this, what do I get? Over 
Who's the boy? What's the answer? So I need 8 of 4k by 1024 to construct the 4n by 8. Interesting, right? <laughs> Alright, so these are the eight these are the eight of them. Let's see. Maybe something like this. Eight of them. Doesn't matter. Alright. Right. Okay, so this is what we have on memory. So I hope you guys understand how the calculations are done.